If you were looking for an immigrant or a passenger who entered the port of New York by ship or even an aircraft through the years spanning 1820 to 1957, the Statue of Liberty Ellis Island Foundation's passenger search is the right tool for you. The records are always free to access on libertyellisfoundation.org. The database contains records from Castle Garden, Ellis Island, and even New York Airport records through the 1940s and 1950s. My name is Erin, and I come to you with years of experience working on Ellis Island at the American Family Immigration History Center. I'm going to walk you through some quick examples of how to use our database, so let's get started. First, enter the first and last name of the passenger you're looking for. While you can search with just a last name, we encourage you to use the passenger's first name for a less overwhelming list of results. For example, there are over 10,000 people in our database named John Smith. Today, we're going to be searching for Gabrielle Coco Chanel. Uh, we know that she traveled to the U.S. in 1931 to design costumes for Hollywood movie stars. So first, we'll enter Gabrielle Chanel. Search. Now, if you get more than one result, that means there's more than one person with the same name, or it's the same person traveling in to the Port of New York more than once. As we said, we were looking for Gabrielle Chanel coming over in 1931 from France. Here we have the result. If you hover over this button here, it'll give you a brief overview about the person, where they're coming from, the date of arrival, age at arrival, things like that. These buttons over here are what you want to click on to view the actual record. The ship manifest is the historic document filled out at port of departure with information about the immigrant or the passenger. So you want to click on that there to view the historic record. Here we have Gabrielle Chanel, frame number 28, line number three. Ship name Europa, arrival date 1931. If you scroll down, you'll see the ship manifest. Over here are the frame numbers. Earlier, we saw that it said frame number 28, so we are on the correct frame. This is a two-page manifest, so it's going to cover both frame 28 and 29, as highlighted here. You want to think of it as an open book that reads across both pages. Line number three up here at the top. That's going to reference what line number the person is on. So we'll hover over the image. Line number three, there she is. We'll read across the document. You see age, marital status, occupation, language spoken, country of origin. Then we'll go to page two, frame 29. It's very important to remain on the same line. It will still be line number three on page two. More information, where they're going, how much money they have. All of these details can be found in the ship manifest. Anything that you find along your journey, it is very important to press this button here, save image to my profile. This is going to save the image to your account so that you can go ahead and view it later. All things saved to your profile will be up here in the corner. Select my profile, passenger searches, manifest images, and there it is. Anything that you find on our website is available for purchase. If you'd like to order copies of the ship manifest, the ship image, or the passenger record, there's an option to add to cart. The frames for the passenger you've selected are automatically put into this cart for you here. As you can see down in the bottom, frame 28 and frame 29 are in the cart. If you'd like to purchase them, add to cart, continue, 
and it'll place them in this card up here at the top for you whenever you're ready you can check out they'll be printed on 11 by 17 acid free archival paper sent to your house and as always anything that you purchase from us goes right back to the restoration and preservation of the statue of liberty and ellis island next i'll show you another example we're going to look for annie moore Annie Moore was the first immigrant to be processed at Ellis Island on January 1st of 1892. If you see here, we have 379 matches for people named Annie Moore. This is where you'll need to know a little bit more about the person you're looking for in order to narrow down your results. So I'm going to use this sorting option here press arrival date, that will sort from earliest to latest. We have ascending selected. You're gonna get the earliest to the latest. We're gonna scroll down. There are a lot of results here, but we are gonna scroll down to 1892. Okay, so what I know about Annie Moore is that she arrived in 1892. We know that she was on the SS Nevada, and we know that she was a teenager. If we look here at the brief overview about Annie Moore, this seems to match the person we're looking for. So what we'll wanna do is click on the ship manifest here to view the record. And we have Annie Moore on the ship Nevada, January of 1892, and she is from Queenstown. Annie Moore is listed on line number two of the manifest. That seems to be her because as the story goes, Annie Moore was with her two younger brothers who were 11 and seven. Annie was 13. They are from Ireland and they are headed to New York. Looks like a match. And finally, in our last example, I am going to show you how to search using filters. In this case, you do need to know a little bit of information about who you're looking for. So in this case, I'm going to show you my own family's record. Now, I know that my great grandfather first came to America in 1903 from Naples, Italy on a ship called the Hohenzollern. So my grandfather's name was Giuseppe Cristinzio. We're going to type in his last name, but due to different spelling complications, um, we're just going to put in a G for his first name because a lot of times Giuseppe was spelled in many different ways or the record was written one way and it was transcribed differently digitally. We're just going to stick with a G for the first name. Now, if you do that and you press this button that says contains here, you're going to get every person whose first name starts with a G and last name is Cristinzio. Then we're going to select the wizard. The wizard gives you all kinds of filters you can use to narrow down your search. They become really important when we don't know exactly how the name was spelled. So we're going to select male. I believe he was single. He was 16. Year of arrival. We will narrow down to 1903 and press search. And there we have it. Giuseppe Cristinzio arrived 1903 from Monteroduni, which is in Italy, on the Hohenzollern. We found it. So we'll click on the ship manifest to view the record. It says that he is on frame number 643 on line number five. Frame 643, line number five. There it is. We're gonna wanna save this to my profile so that I'll have it for safekeeping. And there you have it. 
I hope that this tutorial was able to give you a better understanding of how to search for your family using the Liberty Ellis Foundation database. There are over 65 million passenger records. Millions of people around the world have a connection to Ellis Island. I hope that this tutorial will help you to find yours. And remember, anything that you find along the way can be purchased. All purchases go back to the restoration and preservation of the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island. Don't forget libertyellisfoundation.org. Select the passenger search to begin.